Hello everyone and I hope you all are doing well. Welcome to another fan to play fantasy match preview. This is for the game between the Sixers and the Hurricane and this is going to be the first game that's going to be played at the Sydney Cricket Ground for this tournament and we've seen a lot of games happen here so we have a lot of insights to be shared with Nikhil Bhai who's with us today. How are you doing Nikhil Bhai and how do you see this game going about? Yes, thank you so much for having me and uh... Yes, so far I think we are starting to get some signs of how teams are going to function. While you may not always have your players coming good in the first uh, instance as well, but you keep backing them, they'll come good. And I think form Samastini is going to come back in the uh, will very soon, I think. Let's see. Yes, that looks like how it's going to be going about. And as far as we are concerned, after a short break last week with all our previews, we have come back with two really good games. And we have been, we have also seen the benefits that we have been able to reap by going with just two batters on fan to play. Yeah. We have seen that benefit in the first game. We dropped the third batter for Colin de Granholm and it worked perfectly. Today, again, we were able to drop that extra third batter, we saw that none of the third batter even ended up crossing 20 points and we were able to take Stekity while most others had to miss out for that third bat on other apps. So yes, I, I always say that I'm not someone who will impose what I feel, but I feel like you should always be loyal towards your own combination and your thought process because that is what will work for you at the end of the day, not your loyalty to any specific application because of its past history, but because of what you are actually getting in the present, that is what is important for you. So make sure that you make the most of that. And uh, on that note, I have something special to share with you, something that is a small sort of Santa for you that is valid till Santa is going to be around. So yes, for all of you who were wondering on how along with playing this tournament, you can also end up reaching the finals and watching the tournament live. Here's your exclusive chance from fan to play up till the 25th of December. Just go make your best deposit on the app. And the first prize is a trip all the way to Australia. And there are prizes all the way up to the 50th odd rank. So make sure that you make the most of it. The app link is in the description of this video. The refer code is on your screen. So there's nothing for you to wait for. Just go ahead, download the app and make the most of it. It's on there right in front of you. Yes, absolutely. And on that note, first up, let's hear more about what we are going to expect at the SCG. So, Nikhil Bhai, what do you feel about the SCG we saw through the World Cup? There were some, some outstanding performances from spinners on this ground. We also saw Nokia being able to shine in such conditions. So, how do you see that extremism fitting out? And also, we discussed a lot about in about this in our T20 World Cup previews that the homeboy Shadab Khan, even though he just played one game there, he really ended up shining at Sydney. And yeah. now he's coming to Sydney, but not as homeboy, but in yeah. opposite colours. So he's played all three roles in just one year on this ground for his national team, for Sydney as, as the home team. And now he's coming from the away team. So do you feel like Shadab will be that X factor again? And how do you see the other spinners also looking out for here? Yeah, I think rightly said. Uh, now, because we play, we play a lot of games happening at Sydney, I think, a lot of folks know already about the venue that hmm. the average score will be around 165, 170. It is good to bat, uh, not too much of bias at times, but it can be on that day given how the conditions are. Now, usually Geelong, as we saw, not always you saw early moments, but when you saw, you saw what Nessar did. So, again, that is something that will happen on the day which you can't control. But traditionally, Sydney is always favored uh, good batting. And spinners come to the game in the in the second innings, and both these sides have it. And I think Shadab again, had he not been a common captain, he would have been hundred percent differential. But I think he's going to be the first team that many people will pick, especially while batting first. So I think hmm. that uh, could really make uh, the game that much even. But there are other uh, handy options for us to try out as well. 
So I feel that will continue. We've seen Pacers also take wickets, uh, left-arm Pacers in second innings, and uh, there is one team that has him. So let's see how that uh, pans out eventually. Yes, so there are a lot of interesting decisions for us to make, whether it's the base team or whether it's decision on the league. So let's hear more about yeah. that in the next section. So Nikhil, bhai, before we look at the base team, what do you think? What are the kind of leagues we can adopt? Because there are quite a few options here that are pretty, yeah. I would I would say, kind of the options that you can depend on because of all-round value. So do you feel like we can actually opt for small leagues in this game? Yeah, we can. I think this, uh, this game will provide us with enough uh, value in terms of the options that we try. Again, hmm. it may still be with the batters only because we don't trust batters enough. So... That is where the option lies for you to try out. I think uh, categorically, if you go ahead and try and bifurcate, most of the games are either going to be mini gels and GLs or hmm. SL and mini gels. Now here, the reason for putting in SL is you're likely to see five, six very common players, but there are still players that you can take slight risk on. Maybe a Moise Sinti case, Moise, maybe a Jordan Sale because he's getting enough time out in the middle because the top order is not clicking. So. Those are the games where you can take a risk and there isn't an obvious ploy that, okay, Tim David has been scoring that, but apart, hmm. from, apart from him, it has not been that like open So hmm. that's where the opportunity lies for us to take that risk. And uh, of course, it, it pays it pays off. It always works out well. Yes, absolutely. And at the time of shooting this, we had the squad news for this game. So as far as squads are concerned, only one change for the Hurricanes with yeah. Billy Stanley going out, Will Parker coming in should not really affect the playing 11s because neither of them have been actively part of that. But yes, who knows, at Sydney, so maybe the extra spinner is what they're thinking of. Yes. But uh, yes, this is what we have in terms of the set of the team. We have gone with Matthew Wade in the keeping, Tim David as one batter and from the Sixers, we have gone with Vince. So, the common thread that you can see as far as Wade and Vince are concerned, they're kind of the batters who don't really take the extra risk unless required. And they're the kind of guys who generally give you like a useful 2025 on most occasions, which is good for us from a fantasy value perspective. And Tim David, difficult to leave with the kind of form that he's in. But something that we see with batters who bat at that number is that they always come in in very high pressure. And while this man seems to succeed all the time, we will see certain guys being those kind of guys being dropped because, particularly because of the kind of role that they're playing. So yes, if you feel like it's going to be a slow pitch and he's going to have a difficult time in a chase, then maybe you can take him in for McDermott. Otherwise, on form, there's no real justification for you to leave that kind of player. Yeah, and again, you see the risk level is medium because you already don't you're not seeing Josh Philippi there, uh, so. There is something that is already a concern that, okay, how do you talk Josh Philippi? But maybe hmm. you can, again, he's playing at home. Uh, he's played a lot of cricket uh, for Sixers and at home. So, in chase, may, I, maybe I feel he might be a better option for you to try. Even in, uh, while, while batting first, if you're very sure of how he will start. The thing is, the top order has struggled. And that is why we've kind of taken just one of the top three. Uh, that is Wade and James Wins in that sense. And of course, you have Tim David. I already gave the option that you can try out Jordan's Moses Henry case as well. Both of these options while batting first. And yeah, I think Josh will eventually probably sneak into the base team uh, post us. But yeah, I think so far, this is what it is. Because see, Matthew Wade batting first and Josh Philippi bat second. It's kind of like a match made in heaven. But if it's reverse, then that is something that you might want to take a call on. Yes, those are some considerations to keep in mind. And uh, before we move to our favorite sections, ensure you hit the like button so that luck continues for us too with the captains and vice captains. Yeah. So we have gone with Shadab Khan as captain, like we discussed extensively about him through the venue conditions. Darcy Short also should be useful and should be might be able to turn his arm over here. And Sean Abbott and Hayden Kerr to round up this section. Nikhil Bhai, how do you see Hayden Kerr going in this game? And do you feel like they'll continue to believe in him with the ball in terms of number of overs? Or do you feel like they might try out an extra spinner in this sort of game? Yeah, I think it is a very interesting one. Because you see, Jackson Bird came in last game and got rid mm. of the top order. Which 
is fine. I don't know if it will always happen. I don't know if Sydney is the kind of venue where he'll succeed, which is why we don't see him now, as of now, in our base team. But Hayden Care could literally take out Ben McDermott if he opens the boat, because Ben mm. McDermott has had the issue with the left arm pace. So if he does that, you're always handy on return. And that he also provides good enough value with the bat, just adds on to that, uh, you know, for fantasy potential that he, that he has. So I think mm. that will be very interesting. But if you see Jackson Bird playing, then maybe you could potentially try him out again if you feel there will be new ball movement. Because even last game, he finished off his four in the first ten. So that is the punt that you have to take, that if Jackson Bird is going to play and you're going to pick him, then you need to drop more from the top order because you're going to expect the lower order or middle and lower order to back. So uh, that is a proper game scenario that visualization that you have to back. Darcy Short, I think, is a very interesting one for this. He has an average of about 50 in head to head, I think. Mm. But now he's not bowling much. But in Sydney, he can bowl. So uh, that is also something that is very interesting to see because he doesn't usually start quick. He start, he takes his time and then accelerates when the other guy's gotten out. So again, these are very specific things now because these batters can contribute in more feats, which is why they are part mm. of the team. But if you see them not being used in the other part, then you can uh, take a call on uh, them and maybe not make them captain vice captain because I'm sure many will come with short captain vice captain. Yes, absolutely. And in the bowlers, you'll see again see a common theme that we have gone with. We have gone with Nathan Ellis. Cutters will be very useful here. Naveen Ulak, cutters will be very useful here. Izaluluk Naveed, whose uh, spin can really trouble that hurricane middle order. The only raw pace option that you see here is Riley Meredith. And that is purely because of the fact that if we are backing few of those top orders of the sixth batting to fail, then Riley Meredith is expected to play a key part in that. So, yes, it will totally depend on the toss on who we see going out of this team because Riley will probably bowl one or two odd overs at the dead too. So, yes, it would be difficult for you to leave him. Maybe if you, even if you feel like the slow ones or the cutters will be more helpful as far as the deck is concerned, but it would be more about where he's bowling and whom he's bowling against more than the deck is the reason of why he features in the team for us. Yeah, and again, you will be probably surprised to not see Patrick Dooley. But uh, again, if if it was to us, we would pick out all the eight, nine bowlers that are there in the game and not take any batter. But we've gone with Naveed, hoping he'll be the uh, kind of a differential player. You can easily drop him if you feel it will not work. So then when you pick guys like Naveed, the team becomes a mini GL or GL kind of team. And you put in a mm-hmm. Dooley who's likely to be picked by more teams, then it is a more small league team. So, and you can always still drop out, say, Nathan Ellis. But what I feel is Kane Richardson, Nathan Ellis, Peter Seedon. I feel all of them so far have bowled well, but they haven't got the wickets in punches. And uh, Ellis, I think, has had a drop catch in almost both the games, if I remember correctly. So that is the thing. You have to back your player. We are backing Nathan Ellis, especially if he bowls first. Uh, if you bowl second and you feel that, uh, no, Dooley might be more useful in the second innings with the spin-off, definitely go ahead and do that. So it is the usage and how you feel about them that is important. So yes, please feel free to make those changes if you feel something is not quite as per your thinking. Yes, and also Dooley we see is sometimes used up top and uh, he's going to face Curtis Patterson. And while Curtis Patterson might not be known for his spin playing ability, he's a left arm batter and that's enough for many captains to either away from bowling their left arm spinner. Don't know if Hurricanes think that way or not, but that is just an assumption of how we yeah. see things going across. So that's another point for you to keep in mind. And that rounds up one of our most detailed base team discussions. But yeah. as we had a lot to discuss there. And now we look at what our best Grand League options for this one. So, Nikhil, why first up to you, who are your two Grand League picks, one from each team? Whew, I think we've discussed almost everybody. I don't think there's anybody left. Uh, <laughs> from Sixers, if they're bad first, I'm very tempted to take a punt on noises. Uh, hmm. I, I don't, I'm not saying I'll put him in the small league team like you. I'm not that uh, gut feel or that strong, uh, courageous person. Maybe I may who knows post us, but I think Moises could have a good time, especially hmm. against this attack. Not too many matchups to worry. Uh, of course, uh, any good ball can get any better out. That is not a concern. But if they're bad first, I think Moises could be an anti-option to try. 
And the second option, again, very tempted to see if Ben McDermott can come off. But I just don't know if it will eventually just happen uh, to be the way it is. So I'll stick with Nathan Ellis as a Grand League option because I ho- I want him to come good. There are some players who just want them to come good. So hopefully Nathan Ellis does that. Yes, absolutely. And uh, one question that I got commonly is there are some Grand League picks that we are mentioning who are part of our team. Why do we do that? Because if they're part of our team and not captain and vice captain, if we are discussing them as Grand yeah. League options, we mean that we want yeah. to try them as captain or vice captain. So, yes, yeah. that is the reason for uh, mentioning in this case uh, Ellis here, like you saw. Yeah. And uh, obviously, uh, my picks are totally stolen, like you can see. But yes. uh, I am hoping that Steven O'Keefe plays this game. Yes. And uh, if he plays this game, he'll be my Grand League pick. He's a seasoned pro on this ground and he'll know exactly what and where to bowl. So, I yes, I will probably try him in my small league team too if he ends yeah. up playing this game. And if he's bowling second, then and definitely. And uh, from Hurricanes, my pick will be Asif Ali. Especially if he's batting first because... This, I, I like we mentioned that spin hitters can be the key here and Asif Ali is a spin hitter. So, yes, that will be my pick from the Hurricanes. And that rounds up our preview. Very detailed one. Thank you to everyone who stayed tuned yeah. till the end. We hope that all of you have a great game. All the good luck to you. And you do tell us who your Grand League pick is Please. in the comments. Have a great one. Have a good game, guys. Happy with you.